Wednesday, October 16, 2019, regular meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is to move the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Second item is the roll call, but before we do that, um, Councillor Donovan will not be here this evening. He let us know um, a bit ago. So with that, Tony, the roll call. Councillor Cloutier? Here. Councillor Johnson? Here. Councillor Foley? Here. Councillor Katarina? Here. Councillor Hamill? Here. Chairman Hayes? Here. Um, and then moving right into the agenda, order number 19076 is an act on a request for an executive session pursuant to Title IX and RSA 405 Consultation with legal counsel regarding the Walmart and Sam's Club property <coughs> tax abatement accounts. So we will break to go into the executive session to meet back here at 7 o'clock. So we apologize, but we will we'll be reconvening in the conference room and be back at 7. So with that, we will turn to the leader motion. 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 Mm -hmm. So moved. Second.
a chick knows the end. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome back. We had started the meeting at 6, and we had adjourned into executive session, and we are now returning. And so we are now on agenda item number four, which is general public comments. So at this time, anybody that would like to make public comments about things that are not on the agenda this evening are welcome to do so at this time. I think we have a candidate already that <laughs> would like to. Sorry. So good evening. I'm Robert Rowan. I live on Bonnie Grove Drive. And I'm a candidate for town council. Uh, many of you know me as Will, which comes from my middle name. Uh, but my legal name is what has to be on the ballot, so for the next three weeks, I'm introducing myself as Robert Rowan. <laughs> um, I really have been struggling with the precedent that's been set over the last couple of years that has candidates for office rise during open comment uh, and make a campaign speech. Um, one of my opponents came to a recent meeting and did a really nice job, and many people have encouraged me to come and take advantage of the same opportunity. Um, but last year, when I was on the council and I was running for re-election, I had two of my opponents uh, make a similar speech, and uh, they did a nice job and were obviously very successful. But at the time, I felt greatly disadvantaged by the, um, by the explicit policies that prevent sitting councillors from making similar comments from the council rostrum, um, as well as just by general decorum as a, as a, um, as a town councillor. I don't know if Councillor Donovan has made any comments about his re-election bid in these chambers. I know that I didn't last year, and I suspect that he hasn't. But I do know that for the past six years, I have watched Bill tackle every controversial issue that our town has faced. And he's handled them all with great skill and knowledge and hard work and tact. His first act on the council was to broker the compromise that resolved the dogs on the beach conflict. And that was six years ago, and that con compromise has still held. And we've all seen him continue to run headfirst into every fire ever since. As a retired, retired municipal lawyer, Bill is a tireless asset to this town. He's incredibly intelligent, reasonable, knows the rules, and can guide people to palatable conclusions and compromise. He's an invaluable sounding board for the other council members and for the town manager. I share many of Councillor Donovan's values and affinities, such as a commitment to low and predictable tax rates affordable housing options, and the preservation of our historic and natural resources. I'll be voting for him for a third term because I want Scarborough to be represented by level-headed, data-minded leaders like Councillor Donovan, who are willing to listen to constituents, to council colleagues, to municipal and school staff, and to students. Leaders who will seek to find balanced solutions through compromise and will ensure that this town remains an exceptional place to live and to work and to learn and do business and retire. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to join us this evening? Uh, good evening. <clears throat> uh, Chairman Hayes, I'm Brian Shumway. I live at Five Memory Lane. I see on the agenda tonight you'll be talking about the um, change in schedule of fees pertaining to the in-lieu fee for affordable housing. And I see it's a second reason reading, and I'd really like to encourage you to pass the motion. It will give us... Um, Many more resources to preserve and create much needed affordable housing in town, and it is uh, unanimously <coughs> supported by the Scarborough Housing Alliance. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Paula O'Brien, Pond View Drive. Um, I take no pleasure in reading this statement and really wished that I didn't feel the need to, but. In this day and age, social media is used for many things, some good and some not so good. I, like most, believe in the right to free speech even in those not so good things some have to say. In the past couple of years, during election time, I've received many screenshots of some of those not so good things people in groups and on their own have had to say. I don't know why they send them to me, but they do. I've never spoke up about them until now. Recently, a couple of these screenshots sent to me involved failed attempts to dig up dirt on a candidate running a respectful campaign for a seat on the next town council. 
I have no problem with freedom of speech regarding any sitting town councilor endorsing or saying to vote for a particular candidate of their choice. That's their right, just like anyone else's. I and many others from various groups do, however, find it problematic when a sitting town councilor or representative of our town makes derogatory, bitter remarks about a candidate, any candidate, on social media. Councilor page or personal page doesn't make it right. It's extremely distasteful to malign and post things on said social media, such as repugnant, and she's a piece of work, among other things, from a sitting town councilor when referring to a candidate running for town council. Ironically, this same town councilor, during her campaign, put out a video stating that she did not want to accept endorsements from certain groups because she didn't want to add to any divisiveness in town. This hateful, immature behavior does just that. Most adults, teachers, and parents would not condone this type of demeaning, bullying behavior should our children be doing it, and we shouldn't condone it or add, it, add to it for a sitting town councilor either. It's wrong. I believe that when someone is a representative on the town council, it should be an honor and a privilege to represent all of your constituents in a tasteful, non-embarrassing, and respectful manner. This is Scarborough, and I hope moving forward, whether a town councilor likes someone or not, agrees with them or not, our representatives can agree to disagree respectfully on social media and treat others the way they want to be treated. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to join us this evening? Okay, closing um, general public comments. Next item on the agenda is item number five, the minutes from October 2nd, which is our regular town council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion, changes, edits? Seeing none, everybody in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. Uh, just a point oh. of order. Yes. I wasn't here, so I didn't vote. So uh, the oh, vote yeah, would I'm not sorry. be unanimous. Sorry. No, my bad, sorry about that. <laughs> um, Item number six is adjustments to the agenda, and we will have an adjustment this evening in kind of in spirit of, of someone that we are going to have um, help us kind of get through an item. So with that, is there a motion to adjust the agenda? Yeah, uh, motion to adjust uh, the agenda such that order number 19-079 gets moved uh, to the beginning of the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, this time, okay, Don, I got that. <laughs> a little slow, but I got it. Um, item number seven is items to be signed, the treasurer's warrants. I have signed those. So at this point, we will move to the agenda, and actually we will now move to order number 19079, an act to approve and authorize the town manager to sign the property tax abatement, settle loan agreements with Walmart Real Estate Business Trust and Sam's Real Estate Business Trust. And Tom, I'll let you kick it off and then introduce um, our, our town attorney that will help walk us yes, through that uh, process. For the purpose of disclosure, uh, the council <coughs> met an executive session around this very matter. We have uh, legal counsel with us this evening. Uh, Jane Castiotikis would, is, is here, and I think we'd like to introduce the matter for council and for the public's benefit. So uh, if it pleases you, um, Jim would like to introduce it. Thank you. Members of the council, my name is Jim Katsafikas. I'm an attorney at Perkins Thompson in Portland and representing the town of Scarborough in this matter. Walmart and Sam's Club have filed property tax abatements, uh, requests for 2017-2018 taxes and 2018-2019 taxes. Uh, both were denied by the town's assessor. The first matter has been to the Board of Assessment Review here in town where their appeal was denied and it's now before the State Board of Property Tax Review. The second is currently before the Board of uh, Assessment Review locally. These matters can take years to litigate. Uh, there are additional costs. Additional appeals can be filed in the interim. Uh, attorney's costs and exper expert fees and costs can mount. And there's always the risk that at the end you may be ordered to pay an abatement with interest. The State Board requires mediation. And through that, uh, the town has been working with Walmart and, and with Sam's Club's representatives to, to discuss a, a potential negotiated settlement, one that would provide for an extended period of time of uh, certainty so that there's both security for the town and uh, for the parties that the tax levels will remain the same, the assessments will remain the same, there's certainty on the other side as to what their obligations will be. Uh, we discussed 
the potential elements of a multi-year settlement that would provide for security and for certainty for both parties. And the council has provided me with parameters for such a settlement. I will attempt to conclude a settlement within the range of those parameters. Uh, I hope to come back with a written settlement that the town manager could enter into that would meet those requirements that were set out by the council. Uh, so this motion simply authorizes the town manager to sign that settlement agreement, uh, assuming that uh, I'm successful in going back and, and satisfying the council with regard to those parameters that it's told me is most important with regard to these matters. Thank you. Does any of the town council members have any questions? Okay. Um, would anybody in the audience like to comment on this particular agenda item? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve? So this moved. Action? Is there a second? Any discussion, comments? Councilor Caterina? Um, I just want to put it on the public record that I, I'm really disappointed in uh, the big corporate entities who can hire all the big lawyers and bring in the big guns and, and try to get abatements uh, when smaller businesses can't afford to do that. And that's all I wanted to put on the record. Yes. Good point. Anybody else would like to counsel forward? I only have two meetings left. I might as well put my two cents in there. I agree 100% with uh, Councilor Katarina and I'm frustrated um, that this is on our table. Um, I'm going to support it um, because I think it's probably our best bet at this point, but um, it's frustrating. Anyone else? Any other comments? Um, all those in favor? <coughs> That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. <laughs> um, we will now revert back to the agenda as written. So we're now on order number 19074, a public hearing and second reading on their proposed amendments to chapter 1301, the general assistance ordinance pursuant to title 22 MRSA 43054. Um, Tom, you wanna sure. kind of, we've this had this before in front of we, us. We have, this is an annual process. Uh, this is us bringing our local ordinance up to reflect the state standards for general assistance. Uh, this is a matter we don't have any control over locally, <laughs> but does require uh, affirmative action on the part of the local legislative body each year. So uh, you're, you can certainly discuss them, but uh, I would respectfully suggest that you can't change them. So. Um, would anybody like to comment on this particular order number? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any comments, discussion? Seeing that we can't change anything, it's kind of mandated, it's a quick item. All those in favor? So I think we're unanimous on that. Um, Check with Councilor Haley. <laughs> and I'm gonna actually turn in this next item, I am going to probably not do this very well, so I'm looking for some assistance. Um, this is an act on the request, this is brought forth by Councilor Pulier on request for the plot proclamation, sorry. Um, for declaring the month of October as, how would you pronounce that? I'm going to stumble through it with my part as well, but dysautonomia. dysautonomia. Okay, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> Awareness month. So with that, John, maybe you can bring us up to speed and tell us that this was yours and you brought it forth and you wanted to lobby on their behalf. So we'd love to hear this. I, I did, and actually I, I'm pleased to do so. And uh, I'm somewhat proud that this is, Proclamation 19-001, which means it's the first one that we've had this year, and I'm not aware of any that we've had in, in the recent uh, past anyways. And uh, Give you a little background. In July, uh, I, I run a business in Old Orchard. I was asked to participate in sponsoring a main theme basket uh, to be included in a silent auction uh, that was happening at the uh, Philadelphia Conference of Dysautonomia International. Um, I agreed, but I have to admit that I uh, didn't really know how to say the word, and I hmm. didn't really know anything about the disorder. Um, but I, I will say that while I still have trouble pronouncing dysautonomia, dysautonomia um, <laughs> I've been inspired by uh, some of our residents here um, who have led the effort in Maine to help spread awareness uh, for this surprisingly common disorder uh, that impacts an estimated 70 million people worldwide. Dysautonomia impacts people of any age, gender, race, 
background, um, including many individuals living in Maine, and it can be very disabling. Um, some forms of dysautonomia can result in death, causing tremendous pain and suffering for those impacted and their loved ones. Increased awareness about this disorder will help patients get diagnosed and treated earlier, save lives, and foster support for individuals and families coping with it in the community. I was honored to be approached about bringing this item forward to the town council so that in proclaiming October as Dysautonomia Awareness Month, we can show our support for these patients, their families, and the medical community in their search for a cure. I'd like to invite one of our residents, uh, Colleen Alman, who is uh, chair of the main chapter, and I believe one of the founders of uh, Dysautonomia International. And I'd like her to share a little bit more about the uh, disorder and how it's impacted her family. Thanks, John. As John said, my name is Colleen Ammon. I live at 42 Clearwater Drive here in Scarborough. My 18-year-old daughter, Molly, a sophomore nursing student at St. Anselm's College, has autoimmune dysautonomia. She couldn't be here tonight because she has class. Dysautonomia is an umbrella term used to describe various conditions that cause a malfunction of the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system controls most of the essential functions of the body that we do not consciously think about, such as heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, dilation and constriction of the pupils of the eye, and temperature control. Molly's presents as POTS, small fiber neuropathy, temperature dysregulation, dizziness, chronic daily headaches, and digestive issues. Our journey began in September 2013 when Molly came down with a mono-like virus. She was not quite 13 and in eighth grade. The virus lingered and she presented with unbearable headaches. She saw six different medical professionals and never returned to school that academic year because the head pain and fatigue she was experiencing were unbearable. She never really had a formal diagnosis, just lingering virus. She was sent to the Boston Children's Hospital Headache Clinic in the spring of 2014. Things stabilized and Molly returned to school in the fall to start her freshman year at Scarborough High School. She was never symptom free and unfortunately new symptoms came on in December. She was getting dizzy and passing out. Molly saw several more new medical professionals including a cardiologist and she received the diagnosis of POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. POTS is a condition in which a person's heart rate increases by over 30 beats per minute when they move from lying or sitting to standing because of abnormal blood flow. I've literally watched my daughter go from a resting heart rate of 65 to 170 in two minutes just from going, getting out of bed. This often leads to dizziness, blacking out, and passing out. Researchers compared the disability seen in POTS to the disability seen in congestive heart failure, or COPD. Currently, there is no cure. With this diagnosis came another out-of-state consultation, this time with a doctor in Texas. He provided suggestions that could be addressed here at home in Maine. Molly missed 12 weeks of school that year because despite having a diagnosis and treatment options, her symptoms continued to worsen with new onset of abdominal pain and continued head pain and fatigue. She started her sophomore year on a modified schedule. She had a shortened day. She started school later than other students. Molly's symptoms didn't improve and we were all frustrated and felt helpless when it came to managing her condition. Her condition had progressed to the point of only having the emergency room as an option. No one knew what to do to alleviate her chronic daily symptoms. Meds did not help, nor did hypnosis or osteopathic manipulation. This brings us to January 2016, two and a half years after Molly first became sick. Molly's pain was so bad that she was lying on my kitchen floor pleading with me to take her to the emergency room, which I did. When they couldn't ha manage her pain, they admitted her and she ended up in the hospital for three nights. This resulted in a referral to a new neurologist who suspected autoimmune dysautonomia. He started her on IVIG treatment in March of 2016 and sent us to Beth Israel and Mass General for additional testing and opinions. Molly has been receiving inpatient IVIG treatments locally at Barbara Bush Children's Hospital every three to five weeks for two to three days ever since. In addition to the hospitals already referenced, Molly has been to Children's Hospital of Wisconsin and we have consulted with doctors in Minnesota and Pennsylvania. 
She is currently followed by an endocrinologist, a gastroenterologist, a neurologist, a rheumatologist, a urologist, and a cardiologist. It continues to be a bumpy road, but we've found support from friends and family, her doctors, her college, and Dysautonomia International. As John mentioned, I'm the co-chair of the Dysautonomia International Maine Support Group, which was just founded this year. Dysautonomia International first started in 2012 and is a 501c3 nonprofit that seeks to improve the lives of over 70 million individuals around the world living with disorders of the autonomic nervous system. They offer patient and physician education resources, community outreach, legislative advocacy, and patient support for all autonomic disorders. They've raised over $4 million for research, education, and support. I am here tonight because October is Dysautonomia Awareness Month. It took us two and a half years to get a diagnosis for Molly, and we were considered lucky. It takes an average of four years for a patient to be diagnosed with POTS, largely because of lack of awareness. Interestingly, POTS is actually more common than multiple sclerosis. I am requesting a proclamation from the town of Scarborough to recognize October as Dysautonomia Awareness Month. My hope is that by raising awareness, the journey for current and not yet diagnosed patients might not be as long and difficult as ours has been. My hope is that we will receive more funding to do more research so that we will one day find a cure. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thanks, John. Thank you. Would anybody else like to come to the podium and speak on this issue? Thank you. That was, that was moving. Thank you. Um, so with that, is there a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. Any comments, discussion comes up forward? Um, one question I had is, so are we doing this just for this month of October, or are we saying here on forward every October would be an opportunity to uh, raise awareness? I, I believe the way it's worded would be this month of October. We can't make it every October? We can do it again. Okay. <laughs> just. Am I allowed to make a comment, or do I have to You have to do it from the, you have to do it from the podium. So what I know about how, so this is new to me because as I said, I'm new to this, um, this position in the state of Maine. My understanding um, from Dysautonomia International is that proclamations can be done annually to continue to help raise awareness. I would defer that obviously to the town council as to whether that's something you would allow or not. Um, but uh, my understanding of proclamations is that they can be um, redone annually. Thank you. Sure. Any other comments? Council Catering? Yeah, um, I thank you for that explanation. Um, I did had no idea what dysautonomia was until I learned about it because of the town council and being friends with some people in the audience who have children uh, affected by it. So thank you very much. Um, and I, I think the thing to do is come back every October and say we need another proclamation because that just brings it back forward, back forward, back forward. So that's my suggestion. Anyone else? I, I guess for me, I just, I just kind of echo, I, I do healthcare. Um, I kind of represent purchasers in the marketplace. This is the first I've heard of this. So I think that awareness is really important. Um, I think it is a good thing that maybe every Every year we do bring it back and we remind everybody that's out there about this. I, I don't think it is common knowledge that these types of this, that's a, that's a compelling story. So thank you. Um, with that, anybody else? All those in favor? Yes, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. You did a great job. And for all of you that probably don't want to sit through the next hour or so. <laughs> Why wouldn't you though? <laughs> If someone you would like to exit, that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Peter, do we want to do a picture of you or something? Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. John? Pause. You guys want a picture before we? We're taking a quick break for a photo op. Yeah, it's Photo up. <laughs> John, why don't you get in with them since yeah. you sponsored the proclamation? 
Yeah. 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 We might need to vacate unless we're <laughs> Where's you Waldo? Just, you stay in it as well because you're okay. the ones who actually signed it. I think the clerk is. I don't Go ahead, you too. With comments? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> okay. Um, the next the next order number is Old Business 19069, second reading on the proposed amendment to Chapter 311, Schedule of Fees Pertaining the In Lieu Fees for the Affordable Housing and Development Transfers. And Tom, I think this has been in front of us before. And it has. Jay so. Chase, uh, planning director, is here. I know he's <laughs> spoken from the podium. He's pleased to do it again if the council uh, wishes. If not, I think he's comfortable right in his seat. As well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I think we're good. Looks like. Um, would anybody like to speak on this particular item this evening? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Um, motion to approve. So, so moved. moved. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion, comments? It just that it's been a long time coming, and uh, I think this was this came. I remember having a conversation my very first year on the council about the twenty thousand dollar fee being ridiculously yeah. low, and so I'm pleased that this is coming to fruition before I leave the council. I, and uh, I'm just going to bring a different perspective to uh, the conversation tonight. I, I do not support this as a small business owner. Um, fees this large are a huge deterrent to uh, being able to, to take on any new endeavor or project. So for that reason, I'm, I'm not in favor of it, uh, but I suspect that I am in the minority. And I, I do absolutely support the, um, the beneficiaries of, of the fees with affordable housing. So. Anyone else this evening? Seeing none, all those in favor? Well, you got to um, get his name out. And, and one. Yeah. Or one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next order of business is new business, order number 19077, first reading and schedule a public hearing on the second, uh, on the proposed amendments to Chapter 302, Scarborough Town Council Rules and Policy, Section 200. Um, with that, maybe there is um, a introduction of this. I don't know. Sure, I'm um, happy to provide that. Sure. Ms. Councilor Donovan is not here. Um, so this uh, issue has been batted around for, well, I would say it was punted for about a year and now it's been batted around for another nine to 10 months. <laughs> so um, it kind of um, came out of uh, an incident that happened near the end of my first year. Um, and I think the, the policy as written and, and in intent is a very well-intentioned policy. Um, my understanding is that uh, historically, you know, what had happened with, before this policy was put in place, uh, folks would sit even behind the council table here and, for example, put out signs supporting their candidate um, or not, or disparaging um, signs as well against other candidates, which for me comes down to a, a real simple principle of good judgment <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I think that's that's my understanding of where the policy was born, um, to kind of keep people, you know, uh, a little bit more in check when they're behind the table, as as we heard some people speak to earlier this evening as well. Um, at the same time, I think we have to be very cautious around uh, 
in, you know, infringing on freedom of speech. And people do have a right to their opinions and, and should be able to uh, put those things out there. So anyway, that's, that's why this policy, or, or that's why this is before you this evening. Um, this year, the Rules and Policy Committee, we probably discussed at three, maybe four different meeting times. We tried to do some language changes that we thought would make it a little clearer um, and ultimately uh, came to the place that no matter what we did, it was too subjective. Um, we did seek uh, input from legal counsel as well as to the, the uh, lawful uh, position of, of the policy. And um, while you know the law, the law is always great, right? Because it's well, it could be legal, but maybe it's not. It was it was very gray. There was no definitive. It was borderline. Yes, you could be infringing on uh, freedom of speech rights. So, with all that said, um, the committee um, ultimately decided that we would be better off to just eliminate the policy altogether and go back to you know a place of let's use good judgment, let's treat each other with mutual respect, um, and and hope that that's enough because um, it should be. So that's that's where we are, and that is the recommendation of the Rules and Policy Committee. Thank you. Does anybody in the audience want to speak to this? We need a motion on the table. All right. oh, yeah. um, seeing no one wants to speak to it, we will entertain motion. So the main, does someone want to introduce a council forward? Um, so I would like to make a quick amendment, if I could. I would like to, uh, oh, sorry, no, motion on the floor first, yeah. Um, so moved. Second. Second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I would like to amend uh, the motion, if possible, to uh, make the, the second reading as uh, the next meeting, the public hearing and second reading, uh, in one fold. And, and my reasoning behind that, I typically don't like that uh, way of doing business. I like to have the separation. Um, but given the time frame and how long this has been, this literally has been a two-year piece. Uh, and part of that is because in year two, the Rules and Policy Committee did not meet once. Um, so there was never an opportunity uh, for this to move forward. So I'd like to see this, some resolution to this um, with the sitting council versus then having, uh, it could be two brand new people, it could be two former counselors, um, but either way, it's been discussed amongst the sitting, people who are sitting here today. So that's my, I understand. People might not agree with that, but that's what my request. So is there a second of that? Second. And with that, open to discussion. Anybody have any comments or suggestions or <coughs> Councilor Johnson? Well, speaking specifically to the amendment, and in this case, I, you know, I, I completely agree with Katie. I think it's um, it's prudent of us. We have we've we've hashed this out with the current committee. We're looking at different committee science assignments. We're looking at an election. Um, the interest in this from the public that seems minimal, so I'd support the amendment. So, anybody else? So with that, oh, uh, that yeah, I guess I. Um, that was kind of like a little. <laughs> I, yeah, there was a. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was pulling it back. I, I, I guess I, I don't. I, I, I don't support the amendment just because it. I, I, I support the the work that has been done, and we'll advocate for that. But I, I don't want to add any perceived impropriety around this. Um, and I, I think it should have enough mer uh, you know, merit on its own to, to survive an election. So um, I wouldn't support the amendment, but I am in favor of what's been done here. Anybody else? Councilor Kettermia? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I agree with Councilor Clucci that um, I don't see any need to rush this. I mean, give people time to see what it is. Uh, and if they want to speak to it, fine. If they don't, fine, and it'll get passed. No need to amend it. Okay, Councilor. Yeah, yeah I respectfully disagree with that. Uh, there have been long delays on this uh, uh, content-wise, um, long procedural delays. We're in the middle of a, of a campaign. Um, I think it's uh, right and correct for us to, to clear the books of this language and uh, get, get it behind us and start relying on uh, on our own common sense rather than a rule that was may have been uh, well intended but was uh, not not well con constructed and um, didn't seem like it was ever 
really effectively applied. So I think we need to get stuff off the books that doesn't belong and, uh, and uh, try to keep life simple if, simpler if we can. Um, yeah, I just want to add a little bit more context, maybe, for, for, especially for uh, Councillor Kluger, who has, was not here at the time. Um, and, and I know, uh, you know, not supposed to take things personally, right? Politics is not personal. This is business. But in this particular case, I will say it is a little bit personal in that I was threatened personally with censure uh, and um, on a policy that may not even be legal to begin with. Uh, when I requested um, that the Rules and Policy Committee take this issue up, I was denied uh, that opportunity. Um, I made, and that was that request was made not only by myself but by members of the public. Um, and that committee never met in a 12-month period. Uh, I, I've made a plea to the uh, my fellow committee member um, to you know support me in, in requesting that we meet and discuss this issue, because I, I live in a country where. I'm a, if I'm accused of something, I should be able to defend myself or at least have the conversation around it. And I was denied that, and that, that committee member also did not support putting it to the committee. At that point, the only um, option I had was I could have, as a sitting counselor, uh, added it to the council agenda just as a, an item by, without, by circumventing the committee process. Um, I didn't want to do that because I felt like that was the wrong thing to do. We, this is how we do things. We go through the committee process. Um, but for me, this is important, uh, and I would like to see some resolution to it uh, and before I leave the council. So I appreciate um, that consideration. Um, it, it was not rushed. <laughs> uh, it's been two years of conversations. <coughs> so um, I, don't, I don't think two years is, a, is rushing things at all uh, to get to some resolution. Thanks. Councilor Johnson. Yeah, just to add to that, it is it is Councillor Foley's last meeting, next meeting, and, and I'm going to be completely honest. I think she deserves this, and I'm going to support the amendment, and this should have been done well over a year ago. Um, and to Don's point, uh, we have very politically active people on the council, as we should. I think that's everybody's right, and I want to clear that out for the next last, let's say, week and a half of before the election. And so I, I would I freely admit that I am supporting this amendment because I think Councillor Foley deserves it. It's that, that simple for me. So, And I guess I'll jump in and I'll support the amendment because I think it is important that, you know, we, the sitting councillors now are kind of familiar with it. We may or may not have new council members later. So I think it is time to kind of, for us to look at what's happened. I think we all know sort of the issues and, and kind of put this together to bed and move forward. So with that, any other further comments on this particular one? All those in favor of the amendment? I think all but one. So now we go back to the main motion. You're supposed to say opposed. How opposed. Many opposed? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, going back to the main motion as amended. Um, is there any further discussion of the main motion as amended, Councilor Johnson? The only the only thing I wanted to add to this is that um, Councilor Donovan was not was not present. So just this this is brought forth. I don't know where Councilor Donovan stands on this. So it came out of committee two to zero. So I just wanted to say that publicly. I'm not suggesting one way or the other, um, but I just thought that that it's important to know that Councilor Donovan wasn't available when we put this forth. So any other comments on the? Um, I, I've always had some mixed feelings about this particular um, section, political activities. As people know, I'm extremely politically active in a lot of things, but I also feel that, I mean, I may not need these guardrails, so to speak, but I am way familiar with the years, late 90s and early <coughs> 2000s, when we had a council that was way out of control, and this is why this came up. Um, I will support uh, removing it, but I will, with a caveat that um, we are assuming that future councilors are going to be able to um, behave themselves appropriately. Um, but that's all I wanted to say, because there is another section in this that has not been brought forward that says, something to the effect of that this in no way uh, restricts a person's uh, First Amendment rights. The only restriction is, you know, in your 
activities as a town councilor and you're holding yourself out as a town councilor or in your official pages as a town councilor, you're not going to be, you know, saying I support this one, the other one, I don't support this one, I don't support the other one, just because. But anyway, but I will support this. And I guess where I'll weigh in, this, this is a tough one for me. I think I've learned the hard way. I used to put some comments on social media about political stuff. I've stopped doing that. Um, I've just kind of made a choice that I think sitting in behind at this table that that's probably appropriate to let others kind of carry the conversation. I do know, I think it's really hard to differentiate between if you have a Facebook page, a social media page that says for town council versus your personal page. I think people know, I, I, I know in this, I, today alone, there have been 18 people that have polled or, you know, looked at my town council page and also looked at my personal page. So I think people do look to us for what we're saying and doing. So I struggle with it. I, I, I like the concept about let's believe in the best and this is good judgment. And hopefully going forward, we won't have issues. If we do, we can always come back and readdress it. But I think um, uh, I, I will support this as, as it is because I think there's been a lot of thought and conversation that's gone into it. Yeah, so one thing that had occurred to me, um, and we didn't necessarily put it forward as a formal motion, but for me, the hardest part of the conversation, the challenging part, was um, defining what it meant to be doing your duties, fulfilling mm -hmm. your duties. So certainly when we're here tonight and we're sitting behind this table, that's part of our council uh, official duties and responsibilities. And a, a policy could be written as such that, um, to kind of drink Jean Marie's point, that while you're sitting by the table, you're not, you know, holding up a sign saying, you know, I hate, I'm not going to say <laughs> <laughs> anything like that. And, and I think that's, again, you know, uh, what, so, and, and that, I believe, in the conversation with the attorney would, would be okay because you're, it's a very clear delineation of what that duty and responsibility was, but the, the gray matter or the part that was ambiguous is the whole idea of social media or if I'm at the post office, you know, mm -hmm. am I... Katie Foley the citizen, or am I Katie Foley the town councilor, or am I Katie Foley a real estate agent? I mean, people have a hard time ever taking that hat off of you, mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I think we kind of came to that place um, where it just seemed simpler to maybe scratch it, and then maybe the Rules and Policy Committee, um, you know, takes it up again next year, and again, makes it a very clear piece of, of not from behind this table, or something like that. Um, I think that might be more appropriate, mm -hmm. or and even or talking about it as a group in your, you know, either early team building or you know establishing group norms, right. kind of a thing. So, thanks. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I will say when I read this uh, particular policy, it, it, it kind of struck me as odd. Um, and I, I don't think it was real clear because we're elected politicians and we should be political to, to some extent, and your choice might be to not participate right. in social media, yours might be too, that's, you know, it's, it's the, that mix that makes it all work. Um, so I, uh, I, I, but I think the original intent of the policy probably was mm -hmm. to restrict behavior behind this table, and it just didn't do that very clearly. So um, yeah, maybe in a second cut at it uh, would be more clear, but I think the confusion that it was creating wasn't worth um, the protections that we were gain, gaining from it. Council Johnson? I will not bring any signs to council meetings <laughs> <laughs> through election season. <laughs> Let me say that publicly. <laughs> so with that, any other comments? So all those in favor with the motion as amended? Order number 19078, act on the request from the communications committee to adopt the public engagement and noticing manual. Yes, uh, I'll do my best to introduce this matter. I've not been uh, working directly with the Communications Committee, but I am very familiar with the policy. This is a policy that uh, staff developed uh, about a year and a half ago, frankly. Uh, we started work on it. Uh, much of that work began with the council you know, really wanting to be uh, more consistent, more clear uh, with our communications. And so uh, we did some research and found some good model policies and tailored them to our purpose. Uh, this policy is actually in place and in practice with staff. We're mm -hmm. meeting with all departments right now to introduce the manual to them. And the intent is really clear and, and 
fairly simple. Uh, we're trying to be very consistent uh, and have a standardized set of way we, ways we communicate. Um, we have an action matrix that uh, tries to understand what the task at hand is and therefore what the sort of messaging around that effort ought to be. Uh, so this policy, uh, you know, we're moving forward at the administrative level. I think it's before you somewhat awkwardly, but I think mm -hmm. the purpose of it uh, is really to raise awareness, to really t telegraph to the community that uh, this is how we intend to conduct our business and hold us accountable to it. And so uh, I might regret the precedent it sets uh, because I mm -hmm. think this is clearly the in the administrative realm. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, I think it's an important thing to demonstrate to our community how we intend to communicate going forward. So with that, is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak to this? Seeing none, I'll close out public comment. Is there a motion to approve this act in the request from the Communications Committee? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion, comments? Um, so I think, well, and Councilor Coulier is gonna jump in here. Um, I think what you just mentioned at the end there, Tom, is exactly what we were kind of struggling with, is that really our purview, I mean, Larissa brought this to us, we think it looks great, we think there could be some other formatting pieces that, that could be uh, streamlined, simpler, whatever. but is it really our purview to be doing something like this? So do, do we need to take any kind of formal action? It kind of feels like Perhaps you don't. We don't. I, I don't think there's any harm in it either, other than uh, setting a precedent that, again, I might regret. Um, but I, I don't think there's any harm in it. So it's the only harm to you, not to us. Is that <laughs> okay. it? That's the way I'm I just see it. <laughs> I, I, well, I agree. I have no idea why we need to adopt this. I see this as, I think it's fabulous. I think it's great as a staff, administrative, you know, this is how we're going to work as a, as, as a uh, town of Scarborough, the employees and staff and management and whatever, and town council, I guess, but I, I so this is really nice, but what are we adopting? I mean, it's like, Perhaps I, huh? can, I can make it simpler. <laughs> I think my purpose has largely been achieved by being on the agenda, by hearing uh, somewhat of a ringing endorsement. Uh, so I, I don't think the council needs to take action, so you could certainly dispense with it, uh, not in a negative kind of way. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Which one? I, 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 was, Paul, was your hand up? Or okay. was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard to tell you guys. Uh, uh, if they do this, then it's kind of like this. So, kind of, yeah. Uh, I'm in the same boat. I, I actually really like the document. I think it's yeah. great work. Um, I, I think moving to standards and you know something that we can all look a guide, look towards or staff can look towards to uh, improve our communications is wonderful and important, but I don't think it's our role to prescribe it. I absolutely endorse it. And you know, and, and maybe it would be worth moving back to committee to try to put something in order together that might make more sense for the council to adopt. But short of that, I, uh, I, I love the manual. I'm glad you're doing it. I think it's progress. Um, but I don't want to force it on you because I think these things need to be fluid. Um, mm. yeah. <laughs> so the reason why I'm laughing is I was chair of the communication committee. <laughs> And then he quit and, and made I, me the no, chair. I, I think I got moved off, but the, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, so, on, uh, so I'm going to own this because I was chair, and I believe this actually came up at literally our first communication committee meeting. And to be completely honest with you, I, I think me and Don made up two-thirds of that communication committee. We were uh, grossly inexperienced, and I think that Larissa brought something forward to us that we thought was great, and I wanted the whole world to see it. And so we voted on it. <laughs> so I guess what I would say is um, I will own this. Uh, this was, I believe, Paul Johnson nine months ago. I, am I saying? <laughs> yeah, um, so I think this, this probably isn't appropriate. And I think it came from uh, the committee's inexperience, uh, to be completely honest with you. Uh, but I still like well, everything. But you accomplish your goal because the whole world has Correct, seen it. Correct, right. I mean, think of the awareness we just rose. <laughs> so I just like to sort of in, a, in an odd way build on the comment that – that's where Johnson just made it. <laughs> so there are now uh, more than, a, I would probably call this a super majority, but you have the three current members of the communications committee here, including the one who 
who started all of this and then left us. So there's more than enough people to say, yes, it's, it's here and now and however, and whatever unholy path it followed to get here, um, there's no harm in us approving it and we'll maybe be more procedurally disciplined in the future. But it's a good resource and, um, you know, there's an expression that success has a thousand parents. So maybe we're having a hard time finding two or three of them, but but it's here and now. I don't see any harm in us voting it. It's going to be more trouble to send it back to committee and then recirculate it. So I, I'd be inclined just to vote the thing and say we're going to support it and use it. I think it's a great resource, and I'm still enthusiastic about it. The town's using it already. It's off and running, and uh, it's a, it's a guidelines for behavior. And we've spent a lot about a lot of the meeting talking about that. So uh, I don't see any harm in voting it. As a candidate, we could table it. Indefinitely, with no date, no action taken, you know, and just and say this is really nice, but we're going to table it. We love it. We think it's lovely, and whatever, and just table it. Yeah, I would recommend if that's your desire, is to it would be postponed indefinitely. Um, that would no date, no date. There's no certain. expectation that it ever comes back before you. That's the proper motion if that's your desire. But it's here now as a vote, so we have to have somebody make an amendment to change the motion. I withdraw what you have, and then yeah. ask to postpone. You know, I, I guess just so it's like that—that's an option to withdraw. And I guess I'll just wait. And I, I don't think there's any harm in, you know, we voting it and kind of giving it its acknowledgement of the communications committee. Um, so I, I would support it going forward for a vote, but if, if, if someone wants to okay. take it off and withdraw it. The only, the only reason I would say to take it off, withdraw it, and table it is by voting on it, it's sort of, we're giving it an official imprimatur, uh, which means that then it becomes an official document, and then you've got to follow it to the letter, yep. potentially. And I don't necessarily want that to happen because I think, as uh, Council Cloutier said, it's it's fluid. It should be fluid, but it gives some great. It's a fabulous document for staff to be using, but I don't think it needs our imprimatur. So that's why I would be in favor of withdrawing it and just tabling it with our enthusiasm and whatever for the use. So is that a motion to yes. withdraw? Yes. Second. Okay, any discussion of the motion to adjourn? Councilor Pollock? Um, yeah, I just, again, in high, well intentioned, <laughs> uh, again, um, and a great document, but I, if it had to come back to the council every single time for any change, mm -hmm. it could just become more of a, a pain and, right. than, than a useful tool. Yeah. And if we have formally adopted it, it would have to, any yeah. changes, you know, communication changes, right, constantly. So any changes would have to come back through the committee, and I just don't see that that's the best use of our time. So, or your time, because I'm done. <laughs> so is there any further discussion of the motion to withdraw? Uh, I, uh, there's a rule first, do no harm. Um, so I don't really see where this would do any harm. So I, I appreciate the procedural uh, turn here, but, uh, I think we're dancing on the head of a pin. So, and I, I always get a little bit, a little bit uh, uncomfortable when Jean Marie uses Latin words that I don't know. So. <laughs> All right. So, if there's no more comments, motion. I mean, vote on the motion to withdraw. Who's in favor of withdrawing it? So it looks like one, two, three, four. All those that are not two. So, so withdraw. All right. All right. Order number 19080. Act on the request to authorize the town manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding between the town of Scarborough and Cross Hold, Crossroads Holdings LLC and Itch Sports Group. And Tom, I think you had some introductory comments, some thoughts. And I do. Um, I think last agenda there was a warm up to this one, perhaps. I, I, I hope I can make it easier for you. Um, I've been the kind of the lead proponent and the chief architect of this for almost six weeks now. It came up in uh, early August, I think, at least uh, the germ of the idea in my mind. Uh, we've come a long way since then. And the purpose that I thought that this document um, would serve and a really important one was twofold. One, uh, our potential private partners were very interested in process and timeline. 
and uh, this document accomplishes a couple of things in that regard. Most importantly, timeline uh, sets a kind of an end date for our process. Um, the council's really answered the process question in great detail by forming an ad hoc committee. That committee is up and running and functioning highly and successfully so far. Uh, and I'm pleased to report that our, uh, the, the private parties uh, have been frequent participants. And so they're demonstrating certainly uh, the willingness to be an active participant in that process. And so largely the reasons that I thought this sort of uh, understanding that would identify mutual expectations and obligations uh, was necessary are have kind of be, been replaced by um, other, other things. So um, this document was intended to provide clarity and to the extent that it doesn't, I, I don't think it's something we ought to move forward with at this point. So if, uh, if the, it's the will of the council, I would suggest the correct uh, action would be a motion to postpone indefinitely and the mm -hmm. effectiveness of that would be to not vote it down, but uh, just right. say that uh, we don't expect this to ever come back before us. So I'd like to make a motion to, to postpone this. And I'll or second take it off the it. agenda. And I'll second it. <coughs> Discussion? Excuse yeah, yeah I, I think you spoke very clearly to, to that, Tom. I, I, you know, six weeks ago, I was an advocate for this as well, as we were trying to feel our way around where we were with the uh, uh, community center process. But now that we have a, a really strong committee up and running, uh, the uh, developer has been an active participant, and uh, they're really collaborating well. I don't, I don't think it adds anything to the process, or, and, and it's potentially uh, it could confuse things or muddy the waters a little. So I, um, I support tabling it. I, I like, uh, you know, I, like I said, I was supportive a couple weeks ago, but I think we've moved past where it's uh, useful right now. Councilor Kennerman. Um, I would agree with Councilor Kluger on this. I know I was a big one. I was pushing it six weeks ago, but six weeks ago it wasn't, we didn't have the committee, we didn't have the developers on board, we didn't have two town counselors involved with that committee. I think that um, things seem to be going swimmingly, so to speak, at this point. So I, I appreciate uh, the town manager putting all the work into this, but I also appreciate him saying, you know, yeah, we don't need it right now. So I would, I would agree. Uh, with tabling it or withdrawing whatever we want to do. With it. So. Anyone else on this issue? Councilor Fuller? Uh, I'm going to support tabling it as well. I did have a question, and Tom, forgive me if you mm -hmm. did actually answer already an email you may have. I'm, I'm behind. Um, the one concern I had about this was um, that if we were to enter that agreement, uh, there was a stipulation around um, not withholding a, a separate space for a community center. T that being taken out of. Do you remember this? I remember you asked the question, and yeah. I don't believe I answered your, okay. your question. So I didn't make that up. All right. And I'm not sure if I'm in a position to answer it tonight. Okay. Um, if we're going to table it, it's not going to matter anyway. Uh, fair enough. But my, I guess, I guess I, the reason I bring it up and the reason I just want to plant the seed with my fellow counselors is that as you move forward and through this, um, I do hope that that's a leverage point you don't give up. Because until you've made a decision about what one or the other and which way you want to go, mm -hmm. you give that up now, you don't get it back. So um, that was a concern that I had. So just. Yeah, the one thing I will say in that regard uh, the backdrop, the, 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 the foothold, I guess, uh, if you will, for this conversation is in the credit enhancement agreement. That's mm -hmm. a legal binding document uh, for both parties. Uh, and this in no way ever intended to give up any rights under that. Uh, and I couldn't agree more with Councilor Foley that we, we shouldn't do that until we're ready to and we know it's the right thing to do. Um, uh, there's a lot of time between now and uh, four years from now, which is our kind of window of opportunity to explore this. Yeah, and, and I will say, Councilor Foley, that there was, in one of the earlier drafts, there was some language in there around that, and we did sit down and talk about that very concern, and they were very willing to kind of back out that language. So. So that was expressed, mm -hmm. and I think, um, and, and I guess I would echo everybody else. I think probably withdrawing this is the right thing to do at this point in time. I mean, I think it's better sometimes documents, even the best drafted documents, can create legal issues downstream. I think as long as the <coughs> parties are in good faith moving forward, and it sounds like we are progressing and we've satisfied what the developers' concerns were. And mm -hmm. yourself, uh, yes. I, I think probably sometimes less is more. So I think. Let's let's continue. So I think with the MBLs have any more comments on mm -hmm. the motion to withdraw? 
So all those in favor? I think that's unanimous. Thank you. Um, item number eight, non-action item. Um, Tom, I think this was just kind of give us a little bit of update on tax cards yeah. and some other thoughts and things that have yeah. been progressing since the last time we had a conversation Then we can open up to councilor comments. Yeah, I do want to appreciate the council's uh, giving me great time and staff great time. I think we had two hours for a, a, a thorough workshop at your last meeting two weeks ago. I think there was a lot of good territory covered. Uh, we don't expect that that necessarily closes the door. We're open to further conversation should uh, that be important. I know Councilor Hamill was not at that meeting. Uh, in the course of that discussion, uh, the issue of property tax cards and the print and printing and mailing of them was discussed. Uh, I don't recall it was discussed in great detail, but it was kind of on the table and there was no clear direction one way or another given the staff other than us saying that we're not, we don't think it's necessarily uh, necessary at this point, given the fact that we have uh, some online tools now available uh, certainly the cards are available to folks. Uh, anyone who doesn't have uh, um, access to computers, um, they can call us or stop by. We'll print them a card and send them home with it. Uh, no appointment necessary. So uh, at this juncture, we think that there's enough different resources for folks to obtain that information should they want it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also report on the uh, GIS tool that we put together. This was an interactive map that allowed folks to look at sales in their area, um, look at their property, do some comparative analysis. Uh, as part of that, we also had a form, a Google form, that folks could uh, request um, uh, abatement changes, uh, particularly to data changes uh, that their car cards are wrong. We've had less than 10 so far. So uh, unfortunately, we'd hoped that there would be more use. And, and maybe there are use, but people just are seeing that as a as an easier, comfortable way of uh, communicating with us. So that will continue to be available, but I just thought you might be interested to know what our experience to date has been. Um, the assessor um, you met with earlier tonight, uh, he continues to be meeting. Uh, he's dedicated Monday, Wednesday, Fridays of each week during the day and then uh, into Wednesday evenings to meet with residents uh, to discuss uh, abatement matters uh, in an informal way. His experience has been that there's been a fair number of changes. A lot of them have been fairly small, you know, a wrong bedroom or quality mm -hmm. factor. And he's pleased to make those changes. Um, but there have, uh, you know, there are certainly some exceptions, but in large part, the meetings have been productive because folks want to want to know that people are, want to hear their concerns, uh, but the results are fairly minimal from a, a baby point of view. Uh, he's continuing to ha have those hours through the end of this month. And going forward, I need to give him a little relief because he's got some other responsibilities. But um, what we've found is when working, folks are coming into the office. Staff is empowered to make those sorts of data changes that are clear and obvious. Uh, so they don't need to occupy, you know, a scheduled appointment with the assessor for that. For the more challenging <coughs> uh, abatement matters, they are referred to him, and we are scheduling appointments. But uh, right now, he's doing things every 30 minutes, and we're finding that there's a fair amount of, I don't say wasted time, but um, not all take 30 minutes, and so it's not a terribly efficient use of his time at this point. So you have our commitment that we'll continue to process these as simply and as informally as possible. Um, and that's uh, kind of my, my update where we are at this point. <clears throat> so I, um, uh, I pushed to uh, get this on the agenda uh, tonight. And due to my absence from the last town council meeting and workshop, which Tom referenced, I requested that this be added to the agenda based on Councilor Johnson's uh, suggestion at the end of the workshop that detailed property cards uh, be mailed to all residential taxpayers and that it be discussed by the full council. So we never really reached a, a position on that. I, I agree that the topic of mailing out detailed property cards, uh, you know, uh, is really sort of a lightning rod for me. It's, uh, it's one of several aspects of the revaluation project that I feel cannot be left to wither and die following our experience and all, all the very hard work and effort that's gone through to try to remediate the process after the fact. So, but in a way that's sort of, the, the mailing of the detailed property cards are sort of like it's a poster child for the entire effort. You know, what should have been an early step in the process to validate with homeowners their assessments you know, may now in fact be a step that, you know, that uh, may be the last step or a step that never happens at all. 
So, so I, I think we owe it, it's a broader issue for me, I think we owe it to our citizens and the town staff uh, who've, who've labored courageously and, and our role as responsible stewards of, of the town's assets, uh, it's a, re a charter requirement that we do that, to learn what went wrong and to require that certain steps be completed going forward. And I, I think it's got to take some sort of formal council directive, uh, including corrective measures that we'd like to see going forward so we, we do not leave this open-ended. So I'm recommending they would include things like designing the proper process and timing going forward, perhaps a yearly or rotating basis as a, in a crude measure uh, versus the crude measure of a minimum state requirement of falling below the 80% assessment versus market value, selecting the correct expert resources to lead the process, starting with uh, you know, what's gonna happen with our own full-time assessor and, our, and the staffing of the assessing department, including a professional uh, a consultant, uh, a s expert in, in assessing um, with well-trained and qualified staff. And then holding the experts accountable, holding the people that retain, you know, care, whether it's KRT appraisal or Tyler Technologies or whoever we use in the future, you know, holding the experts accountable. I know we've, we've substituted a lot of our own remedial efforts as counselors, and I think all of that has been welcome and, um, and uh, uh, not expected. Uh, and a surprising effort, but it's not uh, not appropriate. We really need to rely on the experts for that, and not be substituting our substituting our ac activity or our, our analysis for that. And finally, partnering with the public to make sure that the responsibility for the success of this process is a shared one. And I think that uh, I think we failed to do that this year. So I'm I am open in terms of how we process this, but I think it's going to take more than just an up-down vote on or an agenda item discussion on mailing detailed property cards. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and, and I'll spend a little bit, Dodd, I think what, what Tom, Tom and I had discussed is, yeah, we need to have a workshop. It, you know, tonight, you know, there was another issue, but, but I, we agree that we need to have a workshop to talk about next steps and what are we going to do that would address a lot of those things you just articulated. So I, I don't know if that resonates with everybody else, if that would be a workshop that we should do to talk about what do we do going forward. Um, it sounds like the open-ended item tonight is the property cards. So I don't know if anybody has some thoughts or others want to comment. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I have never agreed with mailing out the property cards with all due respect to Ms. Hamill. Um, just because there is a lot of online access and people can call and get them, but that being said, a lot of the factors he talked about make sense. And yeah, it should be potentially workshop, but I would wait till after the beginning of the year when you see you've got a new council seated and, and a new assessor and all of that. So I would, I would wait until the beginning of the year to, to do that. Sorry. Yeah, I'm all set. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I don't think it's cost effective to, to mail out the property tax cards. But I, I'll step back to the you know, communications agenda item that we had earlier about the manual. I think Don's point is, is well taken in that I don't know that we have the procedures quite ironed out mm -hmm. for how we approach assessing. And I don't think we will until we hire the, uh, whoever the next assessor is going to be. But I would like to see something um, developed for mm -hmm. uh, for administratively anyways, for, for the staff to follow. And I would absolutely support um, directing the town manager to see that that happens. Uh, so first I wanted to thank Councilor Hamill for still beating this drum. I think even though there's not a whole lot that's gonna come out of us discussing this, you know, when you have many members of the public expressing the same concern, this is better than just not responding at all. So I, I do, even though this is a non-action item, I do appreciate the fact that we have a chance to discuss this. I, I agree with Councillor uh, Clucci. I don't think it's cost effective right now. Uh, but, but I do think we need to look at what are the action items we can do moving forward. And the things I'm hearing pretty clearly is that as a council, perhaps we need to decide if we're going to do this on a rotating basis, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, there is something that we can walk out of this right now. It's like we're going to do, it seems to me in the future, possibly near future, we're going to make a decision on are we going to change the way we did mm -hmm. things? And, and it sounds like we might, and it's a very strong possibility. And then I would take this opportunity to publicly ask uh, the town manager when we're interviewing for a 
new tax assessor, and this is not a reflection on M Mr. Bofard because I think he's been fantastic, but you know, clearly, clearly there should be some interview questions about the communication surrounding this and, and mm -hmm. how, and how, what the new assessor can bring to the table. Again, we did a third party for this, so I think, I think the majority of this is on a third party entity, not the town. Um, but anyways, I wanted to thank you, Don, for, for at least beating this drum. It's important when constituents care about something that we at least have the opportunity to publicly explain why we have not acknowledged the request. I'm with Councillor Clucci in the long run, uh, in the immediate future, but I think we have some actionable items we'll be able to pursue. So, two really important things. Number one, how do you pronounce your last name? Yeah. Uh, it's like wait, wait, sorry, I was not on the mic. How do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> I pronounce it Clucci. Okay, I want to get that right because everyone <laughs> does it different. All right, so um, I, I think I agree with everything that uh, others have said. At this point, I don't think it makes sense, but I also am grateful and uh, think the conversation is important. And most importantly is anytime we have a big lesson like this, figuring out a way to codify it, make it, uh, because that which gets written gets done, so that the next time around we don't make the same mistakes because it's easy to go, oh, we should have, and then we just talk about it and then nothing's, you know, procedurally changed for the next time around. So I don't think that's going to happen this time and that's, that's good. And I guess I would kind of echo what's been said. I'm not sure at this point, especially with Tom sharing, how many, how many people have actually asked for cards in the last couple of weeks? At one well, point, no, I, I think there probably have been scores of, of folks that have come in for cards, which we're pleased to do. I was referring to this new online, the new online component okay. uh, that, that hasn't taken yet, but that's it's still new, so that may, it may in the future. So may I make a motion to withdraw the request to vote on the property cards? Well, this is a non-action item, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just discussion. It's not necessary. Yeah. We're just talking. So no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but I get it sassy with two meetings left of me. I'm getting sassy. <laughs> but, but I guess the question, Tom. So, but there still is a vehicle, a way for folks to get their property cards oh, yes. if, if they're interested, and you're of still course. making accommodations for that. So I think based on that, they can call. We'll mail it. They can stop in. We can print it on the spot. So I. I yeah, there certainly are ways, and then, of course, all the online resources. So then I think the second takeaway from sort of the comments and what I'm hearing is, yeah, we need to have a workshop where we come out, we codify it to, to yeah. get to Council Foley's words and come up with a process and require, you know, really think about how we're going to do it going forward so we do learn those lessons. So it, it's it's set down so going forward there's there's a guidepost. Yeah. <clears throat> That's... Mm -hmm. there anybody else? Are we... Have we done what we needed to do, you think, on that one? Okay. Um, item number nine, standing, um, standing and special committee reports. Um, I guess I'll start at that end of the table. John? Great. Uh, Paul and I haven't talked about who's going to hit the, Go ahead. the yep. community center committee. Uh, fill in the blanks. Yep. Uh, uh, we, were at, we continue to we meet weekly. Uh, we did not meet this week due to the holiday, but we meet uh, Monday evening on... Uh, uh, at 6.30 at Wentworth. Me. Uh, the meetings are open to the public. Uh, the committee developed a survey. There's a subcommittee uh, that developed a survey that is circulating now um, in the early stages of outreach anyways. And the response uh, in terms of number of people who have actually completed the survey has been impressive. Um, I think we're approaching 800 um, oh, wow. as of the last that I heard. Um, and that doesn't include any of the many paper um, surveys that have been sent out and distributed. So um, so people are engaged, which is good. And I think the committee had a really good plan about how to try to solicit as much feedback as we can. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that we'll get some meaningful information as it relates to public sentiment for a community center and how to pay for it and all those uh, the questions that are asked. So um, I, I think the progress is being made. The timeline is extremely tight, and, and everybody understands that. Uh, but I think to this point, the, the work's been very, very good. So I think I'll just use this time to, um, I've re we've received some emails with some concerns about the community center process. So I just want to say publicly some of the things I've written to some constituents over email. Um, I think that it's important for uh, the public to understand that the council is not taking any action on this whatsoever uh, until probably well past, well, who knows, but definitely no later than December 15th. Uh, the committee is charged sp specifically to give us a recommendation on um, their work and if this lease agreement is even worth it. It is well within the committee's rights and I can tell <coughs> you we have a lot of 
critical thinkers on the committee, they may recommend that this is not worth it. Um, and we don't know the financials. There is no, we, we've had, we had one LOI presented to the town council six to eight weeks ago. It was <laughs> promptly withdrawn. So frankly, we don't know. We don't know what the funding mechanism will be. We don't know what the revenue model is. We still have a lot of unanswered questions. So as a council, we're, I just think it's important to realize that there's no action we're taking until the committee is doing work. Uh, lastly, John, uh, Councillor Clucci and I, we're non-voting members on this committee. This, the town council has no influence, so to speak, over this committee. This is made up of nine people who have volunteered their time from all walks of life, and again, are from various really interests in the community center. It's not, it's not made up of nine people trying to magically make up a community center. Um, and as someone who is highly skeptical of the timeline, I have been encouraged by um, the management of the committee so far and the progress of the committee. Now, now, we've done good for phase one, or we're doing good for phase one, but then now there's several, several phases. So perhaps once we get to the financial phase of the committee, then may, perhaps we'll reach a snag or two. Um, but I think it's important. It's not the town council sitting around talking about the community center. This is, we had 50 applicants. We chose nine. It's, it's their responsibility. Um, so I just wanted to say that publicly because I think a lot of, there's a lot of confusion going on, and rightfully so. That's, I don't think that's anybody's fault. I think when we, we have two things coming down the line, one's public, one's private, there's a downs development, there's lots of things to try to articulate to the public. Uh, so if, if anybody is listening this evening, I just wanted to articulate that directly. So. Uh, yes, thanks. The uh, Conservation Commission met this week. Um, they continue mm -hmm. to work towards that project I mentioned uh, a meeting or two ago around sea level rise, and um, they've got some uh, teachers on board from the schools, um, and they're going to go after a grant to get some funding uh, to help with that and try and bring on a guest artist. And this would be um, down at Pine Point, I believe. It would be a way to um, create a large mural that would give a, a really clear visual of, of how sea level rise will affect us uh, down the road. Um, a lot of discussion uh, and concern around, uh, there's a shared road, Sawyer Road that was shared mm -hmm. between Scarborough and Cape Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's some, some traffic studies that are going to be ensuing there to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's an interesting particular case study for abandonment because uh, depending on which way that goes, it's, um, there's really a need to let nature take its course in some places. So they're keeping an eye on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Jamie, the sustainability coordinator, shared with us that uh, I think it's going to, it will be coming to the ordinance committee um, to uh, be discussing and potentially approving um, zoning for large scale solar, which mm -hmm. is very, uh, currently our zoning does not allow that. Um, and uh, so there's some very interested parties uh, around that. So that's it from the Conservation Committee. Um, communication Committee also met. We discussed the SWAC analysis. Councillor Johnson's time was not without some, you know, pieces put forward. So, um, and uh, Larissa's going to compile kind of that discussion and we're, we'll come back through it. But we, we really spent most of the time kind of cleaning up um, some matters and thought and talking about really how that committee could be more effective or more uh, an opportunity uh, going forward and what that will look like. And that's really it. I think. Good. Thank you. How's it going? Ordinance meets tomorrow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, ordinance is tomorrow at 4 p.m. if we aren't all blown away uh -huh. before, before then. <laughs> I mean, there are high wind warnings, but. Yeah. Town Hall never loses electricity, so we should be good. Uh, it's just getting the end. But uh, so stay tuned. But we we are planning at 4 p.m. and it will be our final um, pass through of the potential marijuana ordinance. We'd like to get it up to the council uh, after tomorrow, um, so that the council can begin working on it. People forget sometimes that the ordinance committee we don't make the decisions per se. What we do is hammer out what we think, the way the wind's blowing, and what we should uh, be bringing forward. But it's certainly up to the council. So um, that's all that's on the agenda tomorrow is, is the marijuana ordinance. Also, uh, the seniors, we met uh, Tuesday. And they are planning to have a table at the election. 
uh, with information and whatever for seniors uh, of interest and I will be covering that table for a couple of hours and then long range planning committee um, we are starting to look at the comprehensive plan we have planned back and Tody after the meeting I need to get my hard copy I keep forgetting to pick it up up here I don't know I suppose it's the front desk do you know anything about it she's saying yes hopefully so <laughs> but that's what we're starting to focus on now finally the comp plan may be back and ready to be looked at so that's it two updates uh, one on appointments and negotiations committee you know we've been working for some time on uh, uh, on the process and timing um, uh, related to um, uh, the the town manager's performance uh, evaluation and employment agreement. Now, this is a tricky one because we, we you know, it involves both um, public and executive committee elements, but we wanted to alert the council to the fact and motivated by the same desire to try to get work that's been uh, underway out out to the council so that at least it's it's on their radar screen uh, as, a, as we move forward uh, after November. And uh, the timing of all of this, uh, you know, won't be until after the first of the year anyway, but we did want to alert the council and the public to the work in progress. Um, and we looked at several things. We looked at some, uh, uh, some disconnect between um, timing of employment agreement aspects as well as what the charter requires and then the other private and public aspects of the work that I talked about. And then just eventually there will need to be some sort of, you know, recommendation on pay, total comp. <coughs> I want to uh, thank Tom and also, in particular, uh, Liam Gallagher for who has been a great resource in this in this effort. And, yeah, sure. and I, now that's required a lot of flexibility on both of their parts to do that. And uh, this, you know, they really uh, approach it with the right spirit of cooperation. Uh, so that's made our work a lot easier. So we'll look forward to to bringing that work forward uh, in the near future. And then on finance. Um, uh, we have a, a pretty big agenda next week, and Tom reminded me we've only got 90 minutes, so uh, some of the stuff may not, you know, may not make it all the way through. But we we want to try to revisit our our quarterly um, review of uh, of our financial performance. You know, of essentially our our uh, revenue versus or versus expenditures, our uh, what our balance sheet looks like in terms of uh, our assets, uh, including our capital plan commitments. So we're going to review uh, fiscal year 2019 and uh, uh, fiscal year 2020 Q1 financials. These are unaudited, but I, I want to appreciate uh, and thank Ruth Porter and the finance team and Tom for uh, you know helping us to get on track and then start to look at, at where we are versus uh, you know our obligations in terms of financial policies. You know we'll also be looking at financial metrics and take and having an update on the public safety building and also talking about uh, you know our our assets particularly as they relate to town property is there some opportunity there you know what what does it look like in terms of town owned property and is that a potential source uh, uh, for a potential liquidation you know and to creating rebuilding our our unrestricted funds uh, and finally uh, we're going to talk at some point about there's a an issue developing in terms of uh, bus stops and people, think, you know, where they're going to be picked up. These uh, involves particularly newly developed communities. Uh, students apparently are required or up to walk up to a quarter of a mile to a bus stop. And there's a, a big debate about public versus private roads and mm -hmm. where the buses are going to go and pick people up. So we're going to have a conversation about that uh, at some point. So it's, uh, it's on the airwaves, so I'm assuming it's probably not going to wait for us. But uh, I just want to alert everybody to that. So. Report. Sure. Uh, hearing Councillor Hamill mention bus stops, we've got we've got our own problems. I'm not sure if I want to <laughs> weigh into uh, uh, school board policy regarding where where bus stops are, but we shall see. Uh, a couple of quick updates. Um, I'm mindful of the fact that uh, Councillor Foley, Foley's time on this council is limited, and <laughs> I think there's still an ongoing bet as to the uh, adjournment time. So I, I who's in, who's it's okay, I'm going to win tonight, so yeah, you, you can are. take oh, your okay. time. All right. <laughs> uh, public safety building. Uh, pleased to report today, final paving went down on the entire project. Uh, you know, we're in, we expect to take uh, occupancy in March or April, uh, long before uh, the asphalt plants are open. So uh, they worked incredibly hard to get all of that 
work wrapped up this year, and uh, they did a really phenomenal job. Uh, I've reported here in the past that we've uh, had some challenges with a design issue on the exterior masonry that's been sorted through. Um, for those of you that are coming up Route 1, you'll notice that facade is uh, nearly to the peak, oh. and they'll keep moving right around the building. Uh, at this point, though, we do expect there'll be some winter conditions that will be experienced just with the lateness of the year. Um, at this point, this is, that's not a town concern. That will be an issue the architect uh, will have to mm -hmm. assume. Um, I'm pleased to report um, the, the design team, the build team, and the town team continues to work very collaboratively through all of this. <clears throat> um, pleased also to report on the sale of the existing building. Uh, we did receive a, a really interesting uh, offer that uh, I actually provided a counter to late last week and expect to perhaps uh, get a, a counter back again tomorrow. So I'm hopeful that I'll have a Finally, uh, an offer that I'm comfortable bringing forward to you and talking about uh, how to move that project forward or that, that building forward. Uh, the advance refunding, uh, this council took action at your last meeting. Uh, markets continue to change. Our financial advisor continues to monitor that, um, not just daily, probably on an hourly basis. <laughs> Things have slid a bit, uh, but we still have two or three weeks before the bond sale, so we'll continue to monitor that. And uh, as we assured you, we're not going to um, we, we presented you a uh, potential amount of savings and a certain amount of refunding. Uh, if it doesn't make financial sense, we're not going to do it. So um, I'll advise you further as we know more, getting closer to that sell date. Um, the candidates night for, for council, school board, and uh, sanitary district candidates was held in these chambers. I want to thank Kevin Freeman for, mm -hmm. again, giving his time to this community. Uh, we are replaying that on channel uh, 1302, and that's twice daily at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. So folks that want to know more about folks running for elected office um, can certainly tune in and find out. Um, isn't it available also if they go on to the town mm -hmm. site sure. and go they sure, watch it whenever they want to? On demand, we'll, but we're putting a prime time at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it's... It, it, I was not in attendance, but I've heard that it was a it good, was good, good opportunity for folks to learn more about these candidates. So, um, it was discussed earlier. We are f uh, fully uh, underway with our recruitment process for a new assessor. Uh, that closing is scheduled to happen. Uh, I think it's Sunday this week. So we're really moving closer to that. We do all of our recruitment online now, so we're able to see certainly online applications and even those that have begun but haven't yet completed. And I'm very encouraged with the uh, with the candidate pool. I I can't say that our past uh, searches have been so successful. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm very pleased, and I listen very intently to much of the conversation. I assure you, there'll be interview questions all around that. Um, and lastly, two housekeeping things uh, in the vein of affordable housing: the Avesta project, uh, that's the Southgate project, uh, has a grand opening scheduled for Wednesday, October 20. Third at 2 p.m. Many of uh, or a number of counselors were able to attend kind of a private session, but this will be a, a public grand opening. And then the Habitat Project on Carpenter Court tomorrow night uh, from 5 to 7, they'll be celebrating uh, that project. And, and that's certainly a project near and dear to my heart. I was involved from um, its infancy to its completion, so I'll be very pleased to, to be there, I believe. Many of the residents uh, who, who now occupy those homes will be part of that celebration, too. And lastly, I'll be attending my uh, annual conference. This is the International City Managers Group. Just imagine how much fun three or 4,000 uh, <laughs> city managers have getting together. Uh, but I'll be away uh, Monday and Tuesday next week back in the office on Wednesday. So with that, I'm available for questions. Great. Thank you. Um, I guess Councillor comments. We'll start down at your end of the table, Councillor Hamill. Yeah, I, uh, you know, it's funny. I was looking at the agenda. I mean, most people don't realize how much back and forth there is putting an agenda together. Uh, <laughs> you know, the public, I'm sure, has no idea. Uh, but, I, and I, I was kind of, you know, getting a little bit worked up about the agenda. I had stuff on there that shouldn't be there, or there's stuff that should be on there that's not there. But we got here and we kind of worked through it. So I, uh, you know, I just um, very encouraged by uh, 
you know, how we were able to, to work our way through this as a group. And I, uh, you know, I'm, regardless of what happens in November, uh, you know, I hope we, I hope we've started something that can continue along those lines. I, I am very impressed by uh, the work that's been done by the ad hoc community center group. You know, mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I had my my issues with the whole concept, mm -hmm. but I've been really impressed with the quality of the people on that team, how quickly they're moving. I did the survey. I thought this is incredible. The survey that you know it was really well done. So I'm I'm encouraged by stuff like that. You know, we have a lot of issues in front of us, but uh, we have a lot of talented people. Uh, and I think we have capable leadership, and I'm 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 hopeful and optimistic. And I, you know, uh, so anyway, I just uh, it was a good meeting tonight. I thought so. Thanks, Thank Council Kennedy. Um, yes, um, Tody, how many people have voted, more or less? We have issued 582 ballots with 283 coming back. So that's not very good. No. Mm. So I, I, that, the reason I ask is I just want to encourage everyone to vote. This is your opportunity to have a say in government. Uh, we have some bond issues on the ballot that are important. Um, we have uh, opportunities. We've got some great people running for council and school board and sanitary district and whatever. So. Um, there are a lot of people in this world who would really like the opportunity to have a say in government and vote. So you owe it to them and you owe it to people who have lost their lives, are protecting our, our democracy. I know it sounds kind of sappy or whatever, but you need to get out there and vote. It's your responsibility. So it's not hard to do. You can come into town hall when town hall's open, cast an absentee ballot, and uh, the voting day is November 5th. 5th. Um, the polls are open from 7 in the morning till 8 at night, so uh, there's no excuse not to come and vote. Um, and along those lines, well, just it's Mr. Hamill talking about like tonight and the agenda, I think people are under the mistaken impression that once you're on the council, we, we don't get along on the council, and I would like to put that to rest because I think we get along really well. We, uh, we don't always agree, and uh, Councilor Hamill and I have talked about this. We don't always agree, but we're kind of like a big Irish family. You fight, 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 but when it comes down to getting things done, we work together, get them done, and we agree to disagree, and we actually, I think, enjoy each other's uh, company for the most part. So, you know, I just want people to understand that. So, anyway, that's it for me. <laughs> Councilor Foley? Yep, I'll be brief. Yep, early voting continues through the 31st. <laughs> Okay, um, so I echo everything Jean Marie said. Don't need to say it again. Get out and vote. Um, I hate to see that we only get a big turnout when we have controversy. Like right. that, that, that's not the kind of town I want to live in. So get out and vote. Uh, it matters. Um, it's getting dark earlier. I know everyone's noticing that. I'm particularly noticing it with bikers and pedestrians. Um, you know, I always think this time of year is the toughest, so uh, please wear something reflective, brighter colors if you can, if you're out there getting exercise in the evening hours, um, and drivers, please pay extra attention. And then this is just a silly little plea. Um, I thought of it yesterday, and I thought, oh. So I hate the look of our communications tower. I think it's hideously <laughs> ugly. I know it's 100% necessary, um, but I'm wondering if we might do something for the holidays with it that would be kind of creative and fun, that would give it some character. It's something that people, you know, whether it's lights or a tree on top or something, I would love you to explore what opportunities we could have to make it kind of become something fun in town rather than the eyesore, that the necessary eyesore that it is. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. How much taxpayer dollars would it take to light that thing up, though? <laughs> <laughs> solar lights. Oh, solar. So I'm going to share two quick personal stories about my fellow counselors, because I like to do that. Um, my fifth grade daughter is in Mr. Marshall's class in Wentworth uh, School, and she loves it. And Mr. Marshall requires the class to actually read the front page of the uh, forecaster in the Scarborough Leader, and then they get quizzed on it. And so um, my daughter was anxious the other night because the forecaster doesn't come to the house. So we had to jump in the car, go to Dunkin' Donuts, get the forecaster. And I said something like, you know, it, it'd be really cool if 
perhaps a town counselor could come talk to your to your class, and she looks at me and she goes, Don Hamill? <laughs> <laughs> so, there, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> uh, my second thing, my second thing is I wanted to thank um, Counselor Clucci. He actually spoke at my entrepreneurship class at Shepherd's High School a couple weeks ago, and I, uh, he was incredibly informative, and the kids engaged in, with him quite well, and one of my teacher, uh, my actual colleagues, went to high school with Counselor Clucci, and she says, well, who's coming to speak in your class today? I said, oh, John Cloutier. And she goes, John Clucci? So that answered my question. So <laughs> if you've noticed, I actually have changed. <laughs> and then so I understood. We talked about Lewiston and all that good stuff. So I she gave me a good education. And she said, well, how do you know each other? I said, well, we were political rivals at one time, and now we're great friends. So we were never political rivals, actually. Um, but anyways, those are my two stories I'd like to share with my fellow <laughs> counselors. <laughs> Thanks. I, I actually had a great time talking to uh, the kids at Shepherds. They're really bright, ask great questions, um, way more attentive than I ever was in, in high school. Uh, so I think Paul does a good job with his class, keeping them focused and, and on the ball. Um, I'll echo, echo what um, has been said already. It, find a reason to vote. You know, some people vote because they're mad. Some people are looking for hope or they're angry or fearful. Whatever it is that gets you up or gets your friends up, vote. It's important. Get to know the people who are running. I'm, I'm sure they're all good people if they're looking to do this. So. Um, that's all I have. Enjoy your night, and uh, if you have anything outside, put it in, because okay. the yeah. wind's coming. Yeah. <clears throat> and, I, and I guess I'll just conclude. I'll like everybody to get out and vote. Um, it's important. We've got some great candidates. It's hard sitting behind these desks, so those folks that are, that are running, <laughs> listen to them and get to know them and, and vote. It's important, and with that, everybody be safe. I think it's going to be some wild weather, as we just talked about. Mm. So thanks, everybody. And with that, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Everybody in favor? All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you don't mind my Tommy Irish story. No.